Hi, everyone. I'm Dylan McGee, founder and executive producer of Makers, and welcome to Makers at Home, coming to you live again from Westchester, New York. Um, for those of you who have watched this, you may not know, but before these things, I get these little butterflies in my stomach um, because we're going live with these iconic women. But um, today, those little butterflies are bigger butterflies because we really have a true history maker with us today. The um, iconic designer, CEO, philanthropist, entrepreneur, I would even add in there philosopher. I mean, there are so many things that this woman does, the one and only Dionne von Furstenberg. Um, and uh, she's actually been doing live conversations um, from her home in Connecticut, um, in charge at home is what, what they're called. And I've been getting a lot of inspiration from them. Um, and they're built off of her podcast, Women in Charge, which we love. So, but I'm excited to flip the camera on Dion and really get a sense of what she's been doing to get through all of this. Um, so I have this special t-shirt, Wildest Dreams. So never in my wildest dreams would I think that I would get to have a live conversation with DVF. But here we are, and here I come, Dion. So get ready for me. Okay, there you are. Waiting. Everyone's saying, thank you for doing this. Yes, we love your comments. Thank you. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, my goodness. Look at you. I'm so happy to see you. I think I'm going to make this less high. Let's see. Yeah, bring that down a little. Although I do love okay. seeing your portraits there. All right. Well, you can't have you either me or the portrait. All right, I'll take you. Not so bad. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dion, I've been listening to your live conversations nonstop. Right. But I'm, very, I'm very happy that now I get to to ask you the questions. But okay. by the way, you're you're a very good interviewer. Do you know that? About am yourself? I? You well, I are. think it's because I am, um, it's, I, I love conversations and I don't like small talk. And therefore, I make sure that uh, it's not about small talk, but it is about intimate. I love intimacy. I think intimacy is one of the most important thing because it means that you pay attention to people. And if you pay attention to people or you pay attention to detail, your life is so much richer. You know, I'm an old, I'm an old woman now. So I, that's why I have so much wisdom. You do have a lot of wisdom. But um, so does that mean we can't do any small talk? Do we have to get deep? No, but I mean, no, it's not like it has to be a serious, but it doesn't have to be um shallow it could be i don't know let's try but All right, I, let's try because i do okay. want to know i i sort of want to know what a what what a day has looked like for you like do you have a, a routine every day that you're doing to keep yourself some people are saying they need a routine do you mean now while we are in confinement yeah while we're in quarantine well actually it's very interesting because i am here in my house uh, this is a special house. It's the house that I bought myself for my 27th birthday. So I was 26 when I bought it. And uh, it was with my first money. I didn't even have a driving license. I was, I didn't know about planting a tree. And, uh, but I wanted a place where I could be on weekends with my children but me feeling free and them feeling free. And so that's why I bought this place. And I always was hoping one day to be stuck there. And I was never really stuck there because even when I lived there more, you know, I would spend two or three days in, you know, in the country, in, in New York. So, and now I've been stuck here for 10 weeks, except for last weekend. And, uh, and it's been incredible. But 
I would think that, oh my God, I had all the time to go into the archives and do the things I wanted to do. Oh, I will have time to read. Oh, I will have time to that. And the truth is that I am actually using this time to reset, to reset my company, to reset the value of the brand, to reset all of those things because you know, you, you carry on old habits and the time changes and it's a digital era and you change and you change and then all of a sudden, so it's a wonderful time to reset. It's a difficult time mm. because, you know, you, because, because people lose jobs because, I mean, it's tough, but it's, it's a forced reset. And so that's what I've been doing. In the meantime, I drink ginger tea. Mm -hmm. I make myself wonderful ginger oh, tea, which what you, it's the best recipe in the world. What you do is you peel the fresh ginger, you slice it, you boil it, mm -hmm. and then you, you mix it with lemon juice and honey. And it's the most wonderful thing. And it's very good for your immune system. And how... Often, do you drink it all day long? Do you make a pot in the morning and then you drink it all day? Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. And then the other thing I am working on, I write diaries, you know? So I write my diary, my journal, you know? Here it okay, is. There you go. And I, I, have an, and I have books because I'm working on a book right now. So the book is going to be called Own It. So I'm working on that. And then I'm working on a secret project that has the code name Wonder Woman. That's oh it. my gosh, a secret project. You're leaving, yeah. you're teasing us. When will we know about the secret project? In January. January, okay. I yeah. can wait till January. Yeah. Um, do you, are you exercising at all? I okay, you so you know, I, I, I swim. I swim. I'm lucky that I have a swimming pool, so I do about 50 laps a day. I also have discovered that my Tai Chi master uh, does Zoom, so I do Tai Chi classes on Zoom. And uh, those are the, I, I know, and I go for a walk. Sorry, I go for a walk every day. I mean, are you sleeping? I am sleeping. I am sleeping. But I, but you know, like everybody else in these moments, you go from moment of, is this true that it's happening? And, this, and then this moment of complete sadness, and then, and then you forget, and then if you have a garden, you're lucky to see spring come up, and then you have, then you start making plans and having projects, and you get excited about the project. And then you wake up the next morning and you say, but do I really have the energy at my age to do that? <laughs> so it's a little bit all kind of thing. But I want to say something. I love to be alone. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is blessing, okay? I love to be alone. But what I want to tell everybody and what is so important to me is to be alone does not mean to be lonely, mm -hmm. okay? And being alone is a time that you go back to yourself because we, you all know what I say. The most important relationship is the relationship you have with yourself. And once you have that, any other relationship is a plus and not a must. <laughs> and, so, and so enjoy that. Discover yourself criticize yourself, be demanding on yourself, but really enjoy because it's only inside yourself that you find the strength. So what are the techniques though, Tian? Because I have, ever since I heard you say that a few years ago, it's been such a mantra for me that I've kept with me. And sometimes I will say when I am feeling lonely or even when you were talking to Gloria the other day, you talked about how um, much your husband loves you, but then as soon as you're feeling needy, you don't think he loves you as much? No, he loves me, but I think he likes me less. Right, you know, because he, you're not... I think, he always, I, I think he always loves me. But yes, it's <laughs> not good to be needy. 
I don't think so. I think the most important thing is you and you and knowing where you stand. And the secret of life is owning it. You own your imperfection, they become your asset. You own your vulnerability, it becomes your strength. And that is really applies to everybody. It applies to children, it applies to old people, it applies to business, it applies if you're diagnosed with cancer. Just you have no choice but owning it. It's such a gift. It, it, it feels, I feel like a release when I think, you know what, I'm okay. As long as I have myself, then I feel good about myself. But are you there- know, even, even when you die, you know, you die, you, you're by yourself. I mean, you die. So you have to be good friends with yourself. You have to be able to wink at yourself in the mirror or, or say hello when you go to the bathroom at night. And, you know, you have to be able to do that. And the best thing I, the best thing about my life is that I realized that really early, maybe it's because for until six, I, I had no brother and sisters and I had my books and then I had my diaries. And I tell everyone, writing a journal, writing a diary is so helpful. Even if what you write is stupid, even if you never read it again, which I never do. And when I read it, it's, I'm not that interested really because wherever I open, it's always I'm at the turning point of my life. It looks like I've done nothing but turn on my life. Do you ever, so you never go back, how many years, you've been doing a diary since you were, how old? Teenager, teenager. Wow. Yeah. Do you keep I don't, I, I, I don't have my teenager's years uh, because my mother had lost them. They were in the storage somewhere. But I have everything since I was 21. 20? Unbelievable. Yeah. What do you think uh, in this? So is Own It, is the, what, what's the book about? Is it about? No, I, don't want, I don't want to talk about that too much either oh. because that's uh, January, but it okay. is called Own It. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I mean, owning it is also part of that philosophy of, of being comfortable with yourself. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned from you in one of your live conversations, you were talking to a doctor in... Was it Austria? About your, about your gut? Oh no! It was a it was a in Chile. I went to Chile in this wonderful spa in January, and I met this uh, Anita Freiholler, German name, and she she does. Um, oh, I always bio probiotic probiotics. And I never heard, I, I didn't know anything about probiotic. I still can't pronounce it. I didn't know that. Did you know that if you, un, if you unroll your gut, do you know that it's as big as a football field? <laughs> I did. I mean, I in, in, in our flat stomach, I mean, that is really hard to believe. I anyway, right so now I could have two football fields in my gut. <laughs> no, so I think that 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 was a discovery. So now I take this, uh, and I interviewed her for one of my in charge conversations. Yes. Well, it was unbelievable because you have no idea how much taking care of your gut and thinking about that in probiotics helps your entire, you know, all your well being. So I was really inspired by that, and I've been drinking ginger and doing probiotics ever since. So thank you for that. Um, you at the, um, at the makers conference, yeah. there were, there were five pieces of pieces of advice that you gave that I'm going to remind you. Oh, okay. And I wonder what they look like, um, in today. this today, right? Okay. What were they? Well, one was the relationship with yourself, which we've talked about. Um, the next one is fear is not an option. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mother, as you know, my mother was a, uh, a prisoner of war during the war. She was 22 years old and she was in the slave camp. She was a slave laborer uh, for the Nazi Germany. And she was in a bullet factory, a crap factory. And uh, she came back. She weighed 49 pounds, but she came back. She survived and she came back and her mother, her parents couldn't believe she came back. She, they fed her, then six months later she got married, and then nine months later I was born. So I really came, I think the fact that I came from that, that I came from nowhere, that my mother was not supposed to survive, 
that I was not supposed to be born. I think that has affected the kind of person that I am. But mostly because my mother always told me she will never allow me to be afraid. If I was afraid of the dark, she would put me in a cl dark closet. <laughs> Now today, today she would get arrested for that. <laughs> but, but as a result, she taught me that fear was not an option. So not being afraid doesn't change the situation. It, it doesn't, you know, the situation is always the same, but by putting the fear you know, in the, in the waste paper basket, you deal with the same situation, but no fear. But, and don't you think that relates to right now? Because I think we're all trying to, well, every, to manage you know, every, uh, 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 you know, no one has lived this kind of moment that we're living now. It's, it's just so, and I don't even see it because I'm not in the city. I am lucky to be in the country. I'm lucky to be home and have a garden. So, I have to force myself to, to know that this is happening. I have to force myself to, but it's, I mean, the world has never been on hold, on pause everywhere. It's never happened. And, but I do believe that, you know, things happen for somehow for a reason. And therefore, um, that's what it is. Look at all this. Everyone's saying your words are a blessing. People are just loving it. Oh, oh, you can see the comments. Oh, it's just, it's like a love fest. You have to read these as they come in. I'm just gobbling okay, them. Okay, I have to tell them to, oh, I have to tell, I, because I have to tell them not, one, one, one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do this. That's, Excuse me, stop, hello. Oh my God, how fun is this? So as we're, Standing here, everybody. This is we're talking to Deanne von Furstenberg from at Makers Women Live, and we want to know where you're from. So she's about to get the comments turned on. So tell us where you're from. Okay. So they're mowing the the, the lawn. So I told them to stop. Oh, they're mowing the lawn. Oh, I thought we were turning on comments. Okay. So the next one is focus on intention. Yes. Okay. So that I learned from my Tai Chi master. And because Tai Chi, what, one of the reasons that I love Tai Chi so much is that you have to, you really have to focus. You can't think of anything else because you have to think about the movement. And so he mentioned something about the word intention. And I stopped him and I said, I love that word, intention. And that's when he said, if you focus on the energy, you... What did he say? <laughs> you, you, you get distracted. If you focus on the power, you get hurt. But if you focus on the intention, you get the energy and the power. And I thought that was very, uh, that it stayed with me. And I love that. So it's very important to remember just the word intention. It's so, so, so important. Is there people have asked, is there a mantra when you wake up in the morning that you say to yourself? Um, no, but when I get, when I wake up and I feel like a loser, which is, you know, at least once a week, <laughs> uh, I will get up and I will look at myself in the mirror and I will say, if you doubt your power, you give power to your doubts. Wait, say that one more time. If you doubt your power, yep. you give power, power to your doubts. To your doubts. Mm. Good, mm. huh? Oh, it's so good. Well, how about this? Well, uh, guess what number four was at the Makers Conference? If you doubt your power, you give power oh, to your doubts. Oh, okay. Power. So we you know yourself won. so well. No, but then your final one is uh, wink at your image, smile at your shadow, and, and enjoy the ride. And I wonder... It sounds like there are you're you're using this time to reset, but also enjoy the ride. Is that true? You have no choice but enjoy the ride. And in the ride of your journey, there are a lot of moments that are painful, mm -hmm. that are difficult, that are frustrating. And I, my advice to somebody who's going through a hard time is always remember the hard times 
make the best souvenirs and the best anecdotes. One day you will be talking about that and, and it's true. And when you look at it that way, it gives you perspective. You know, I'm an old woman. I've lived so fully. I mean, so fully every day of my life. That's why I can't deny my age. That's why I have to. But every, you know, so I, I have a lot of experience. I have a lot of knowledge. I have a lot of of memories and and you know sometimes I talk people talk and it's like I'm a history book you know, oh I knew this one I knew that one <laughs> and I just think maybe they just think I'm boasting or something uh, but so at the, at the point at this point of my life it's really important that I share my voice that I share my experience that I share my connection and I help other people to be the women they want to be so what I mean, is there, you've learned so much about yourself, as you say, and you have so much wisdom and you are sharing that with all of us and we're so lucky. And I'm wondering if there's, but is there anything that even in this, the past 10 weeks that you've learned about yourself that's different? Oh, what I, what I learned about myself is just the confirmation how much I love being alone. I mean, I, it's nice to have friends. It's, I love my family, but I love that my family exists. Doesn't mean I have to be with them all the time. I, but I, I, yeah, I like to be alone. I do. And yeah. And I, and I hope that through this moment that we all live, a lot of people discover themselves and discover that, you know what? It's nice to be alone. It's a reset moment. It, you know, it, it has a reason. Silence, solitude, all of that has a reason. So if you inspire so many of us and me in particular, I wonder who are your muses? Who inspires you? Oh, so many muses. Uh, oh my God, anything from, you know, if you go back in history, oh my God, let's see who, uh, who I mean, any, any, I mean, um, you know, all these, you know, have you been into my studio where you have all these women from uh, Ashley? Uh, all of them are, are you know, Gloria Steinem is a muse to me. Um, Nancy Pelosi is a woman who used to me. Maria Angelou, Oprah, um, um, Jane Goodall, um, Amelia Earhart, um, Eddie Lamar. Um, I mean, people that, and you thought that Eddie Lamar was a bimbo and she, and she was a beautiful woman and men treated her like a bimbo. And yet, if we have Wi-Fi, it's thanks to the trademark that she had done. She was a scientist. So, um, Golda Meyer, I mean, uh, uh, the woman, um, Tubman. Um, Harriet Tubman. Yes, Harriet Tubman. I didn't know anything about her. Beyond, they're so... all women. Oh, yes. yes. Are all, all your women. muses women? Yes. 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 Are you, um, do you consider your, what, what are your thoughts on feminism and the word feminism? Oh, I am a big, big feminist with many, many, many M's. And I'm a feminist. I'm a female. I am proud to be a feminist. I would not want to be a man. I love men, but <laughs> I, I, I can never cease to be impressed uh, by the strength of women. I have never met a woman who is not strong. All women are strong, and, but sometimes they don't know it. And yet, when there's a tragedy, all of a sudden they, they take one child, the other child, and then the money to do it, and off they go. Women are endless source of strength. And if you um, had to think about one of you, the way you, you brought uh, Gloria Steinem's conversation to an end, I thought was, um, how do you want to be remembered? Me? Yeah. I would like to be remembered as a woman who who became the woman she wanted to be and who helped others to be the women they want to be. 
Well, you're doing that. And we're so inspired by you. And, and if you can believe it, our time has already passed. Um, and thank you. And I have to say, you are so wonderful. I will always remember that very first interview we did with Makers. And I didn't know what Makers was. And that was the best interview ever. So you are a wonderful force and you bring women together and you, ha you have a huge heart and you have a lot of energy and it's really, really nice. Well, it's, I get a lot of energy just like you do by all of the extraordinary women and you were one of the very first women to say yes to makers when you didn't even know what it was. It was women like you and Katie Couric and Gloria and Oprah who kind of believed that women's voices needed to be heard and preserved. And more than ever. And let us please remember to go and vote. And let us, I was going to end on what is one piece of advice that you want to give to everybody in the world right now? First thing is to make sure you like yourself and make sure that you use your voice. And using your voice means vote. Using your voice means care. Using your voice means help others. All right, everybody, you heard it from the one and only, the real DVF. I love you so much, and I'm sending you a big virtual kiss and a hug. On behalf of That Makers Women, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you to help us to be makers. Bye. <laughs>